Hi, this is Tech again, and today I want to do the follow up of the cache modded Pentium 3. Now we have our little chip here with the highly professional mount uh, on the ABIT BF6, and the power supply featured in the uh, Athlon XP video, kind of old one. Ripple was still good, strong 5 volt rail, I think 40 amps or something like that. There is the little single stage phase change, so let's turn on this thing and see what we can do. Cooling down. Let's turn on the board and set some stuff in BIOS. Okay, I think first off I'm going to try something like, I don't know. Maybe 700-ish, right, right off the bat. Because if it doesn't do that, it's basically worthless anyways. Uh, let's try... I don't know. Let's go up to 150. Now this is a bit much for a first try, but why not? Maybe it works. So let's set the V-core to the highest the BIOS allows. This to 3.7. Cache is enabled. This to C2, obviously. Okay. It's at minus 59, that looks good. See if she even posts. 750. Well, see what happens now. I think we got already stuck on 52, which is not a good sign. I will be back once I figured out what the problem here is. Okay, so I think we just have a garbage CPU. This is almost 2.9 volts. And that's what we need to get to the Windows load screen even with a uh, cache disabled. And cache disabled and enabled doesn't make any difference whatsoever in stability or trying to boot. So I think we just have a CPU that is too bad for 750 megahertz. No matter what, basically. So I think this is a really, really bad example for the cache mod, to be honest, because if we have a core that is that garbage, there is no way we're going to see any improvement from the cache mod. Kind of unfortunate situation, I have to say. Anyways, I will test some other Pentium 3s on this and... Well... Maybe I find one that is uh, a bit friendlier. And I have a suspicion it is going to be one with a stock cache. So... I'm. I feel like the whole cache mode endeavor here was pretty much pointless. Eh? I just rebooted. Great. Just a bit of a afterthought. I because I got a bit curious. I put in a unmodded 500 megahertz Pentium 3 now. Uh, it has NEC 3.6 nanosecond cache on there by stock, and we booted up just fine. And a bit over 2.8 volts for 750 megahertz. Memory is also on point, cache is here, so let's try to bench this thing. But this proves even more that cache mods are just uh, messing around and not really practical for overclocking, I guess. Unfortunately so. And it crashed. Great. Now I'm going to test some more, I guess. Okay, so there was probably no way to get this thing stable at 750 with cache. However, right now I'm running 2.75 volts and it seems to be running W prime. However, this is without cache. So maybe I haven't completely given up on cache mode yet, but it's going to be a bit more annoying because 
basically what I have to do now is um, not use a total reject chip but uh, pre-bin the chips on single stage for core quality and then basically risk one of the chips with a good core and swap the cache on it so also it crashed because I was filming obviously that's that's how these things go yay okay I think I figured out the issue uh, I think I will need a vdroop mod or something for this board because right now as we you can see we have one uh, 2.65 volts here and it seems to crash when vCore is too high actually and in idle this setting will be over 2.7 now uh, so unless I can figure out how to vdroop mod this thing I'm basically limited to lower vCores for stability which is annoying or the alternative option is always ePower of course but I'm not quite confident that's the best idea with this board uh, I might try it on a Asus P3BF or something like that that it's not quite as rare and that I have more than one of because I only have one of these Avid boards which is quite untypical for me to be honest because usually I have at least two of every board or I like to have two of every board in case I kill one uh, anyways I will let you know how this went Hopefully I'm going to get at least something out of this little session in W Prime, I guess. Now, obviously, what I'm doing here is kind of pointless because I have a CPU with the tag chip and the cache removed that is probably going to run W Prime not only at uh, 750 MHz but at something like, I don't know, maybe 800-ish even. So, that's just fooling around here really. Okay, so I finally succeeded in getting it to run and we even got the first place by like, I don't know, 100 milliseconds or so. Anyways, uh, I, I had to dial down the V-Core way, way down because every time it would crash on the end of the bench when the load would be over and the V-Core would rise up again. So we are at like 1.2.65 uh, in idle now and on the load that's like 2.6 it's honestly really annoying that I have to run way lower vigor just so it doesn't crash on the end of benches now uh, I, I hope I'll figure some way around this anyways it wasn't a total failure however the cache mod was a total failure at least on the CPU we tried it on and another update. I guess I will have to edit this together and make a voiceover or something. I don't know at this point anymore. Anyways, I got it again to boot uh, with cache. Just using the lower vCore and cranking the I.O. voltage way, way up. I think it's 3.9 volts now. Uh, now, this thing scaling from 3.7 to 3.9 uh makes me wonder if i might need a io voltage mod on this board so i can crank it to like four volts plus anyways i will try to run something like pyfast or super pi now and, and see if it does anything and nope it doesn't do anything this is pyfast and it didn't even get one loop in so or one whatever they call it like where it jumps from six to five anyways uh so without IO voltage mod there is definitely no chance I think that this thing will do uh, 750 with cash. I guess I will have to try some more chips. Okay so a couple hours have passed and it's like 4 in the morning now but I figured something out. Uh, still running relatively low voltage, different chip this time. Again this is all over the place. Uh, on the load it's like 2.5 uh, volts it's it's really bad anyway this is a chip with NEC 4 nanosecond cache now and the previous top scores with the well the benches that care about cache so PyFast and SuperPy were also with the 4 nanosecond ones now stupid me thought that 3.6 nanosecond cache would be better than 4 nanosecond cache so I, I used a, a chip with NEC 4 uh, 3.6 nanosecond cache. Well, turns out that's completely wrong, I guess. 
uh, four nanosecond cache seems to be the way to go. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever because it's technically the same manufacturer and lower rating, but apparently it clocks higher. Anyways, here's what I currently have. 750. Come on, focus. 750 with cache. Memory is complete garbage and score is complete garbage because of that, of course, but I'm finally getting somewhere with these. Anyways, so apparently it's the, the whole cache thing is another one of those situations where you shouldn't believe what the manufacturer says, as usual. Uh, maybe I will do a like list of the cache manufacturers, which ones are actually, well, cache types, which ones are actually usable and which ones are garbage. So maybe the, the 300 MHz cache I swapped on the other stuff does 300 MHz, yes! But it doesn't have the overclocking tolerance that this 4 nanosecond stuff here has. This is 250 MHz rate at uh, running at, what is this, uh, 375 MHz I think that should be. So yeah. So much for ratings. Anyways, I will end this video now and I hope you enjoyed it. As rambly and as, well, much of a roller coaster as it was. Anyways, bye.